We are 16 days from our conference that we are super excited about. I think two more weeks and we're going to have to get a new facility. And so um, it is going to be an awesome, awesome time. Um, you know, we are growing and people are getting saved. Home groups are being opened. Some of you walked in, you saw that we are completely remodeling nursery room for the seventh time. And, uh, but it's going to be something awesome that's going to be happening. I'm believing very soon we're going to have our two Sunday schools, one on Sunday morning and one on Wednesday night for the kids. So a lot of the parents who are coming here with the kids, your youngsters, are going to be also receiving teaching. And so we are really excited for where God is taking us with an internship, with our TV show and million other things that are going on here that most people are not even aware what is happening here. And so, and even what's happening at the morning prayers, there's such a joy seeing in the mornings people coming at five o'clock, six o'clock, praying, spending time with Holy Spirit. Some who, 11 o'clock, I remember one time I was like 10 30 I was like didn't we kind of close that thing down okay I guess we'll open it just for you go put your few prayers and make sure you pray for us and so but it's so good to see that we're going to be a praying church we're going to make it popular to live a life of prayer make it popular to serve Jesus Christ amen not for the popularity's sake but for his sake amen and so I believe this is the day and this is the generation I heard one of last week I think last week somebody said they came and they're like when I heard young people getting up you know good looking young people and you gotta know one thing until we receive Jesus we were not good looking it's Jesus who does miracles somebody said amen <laughs> and he says when I see young people getting up and praying for their generation when I see young people getting up and and talking about giving and get, getting up and coming for morning prayers and not just young people who are you know no good but they're they're having businesses and they're finishing bachelors and masters and they're occupying you know great positions in a community and challenging others to challenge the status quo it says it brings me joy and it brings the honor to the name of Jesus Christ Amen. God loves us anywhere we are at but he wants to bring us up out of our situation and glorify his name through our life. Can somebody say amen. And so we are super excited for what God is doing and what God is going to continue to do in our lives and through our lives for his glory. And then most of you already know our classes for, for uh, people who are beginning their faith in God and those who want to become mentors. They are beginning and they're continuing this Friday at 8 o'clock with night prayer at 9 o'clock. Last night prayer last Friday was phenomenal. Holy Spirit was moving. Awesome things were happening and I'm really excited for what God is going to continue to do. There's some awesome news that's coming up next year in the spring that I wish I could tell you but you just have to come to night prayer but it's not recorded and we tell everything there. So but in here we just give PG versions and we, we hide the secrets. So night prayers is when every secret is out and we rejoice and jump and praise God. And so but awesome things are happening. We are super excited for what God has taken our church, where we are going with God and where Holy Spirit is going to lead us individually for His glory. Can somebody say Amen. Let's put a hand together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ such a joy to see so many new faces here this tonight so many faces some people from outside of town and those of us who are inside of town those of you who brought your friends and uh, always always be happy in the house of God even if we brought your friend who likes you okay don't ever don't ever downplay your worship for the person that you invited don't ever try to be all cute you know kind of when you brought nobody to church you're like thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord and then sometimes and I watch people you know and your friend comes to church and you're like come on come on the Bible says don't be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ let your worship out you don't ever play cool when you watch the game and your friends are there who hate the game you still go all out you don't care what they think and the place where you should you should we should all respect every person but we should always respect God more can somebody say amen and I know what it's like when you have I had a principal of Pasco High came to our youth service once I invited him well he almost kicked me out of the school because I put so many flyers in school without his permission I didn't know you had to ask permission I just asked permission from a teacher for a stapler and I stapled a thousand flyers in the whole Pasco High and so the next morning in the nine o'clock uh, class I get I hear a, a phone from the principal's office and they asked me to go there and there's like six six to ten security guards there so I'm like oh my goodness I'm like Apostle Peter gonna be arrested in front of the Sandrin 
and uh, being there the principal came out he investigated me asked me the questions out on the table I was shaking I was so afraid and he he let me stay in school then he kicked me out and then a month later I, I saw him he asked me how's your youth rallies going so I said they're doing good they're doing awesome and he asked me again how's your youth rallies going I said hey they're doing awesome and then I got this idea invite him to those youth rallies so I came to him and said hey would you mind Mr. So-and-so come to and speak for a few minutes about because he was a Christian he said of course I would love to you know and I remember when he came here and I'm like you know what I need to kind of act all cool but I didn't I was preaching praying the same way as though he wasn't here because he is a man with a title but he still is a man amen every person is a person with a soul but we always should honor and respect our God in Jesus name amen let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ and without further ado let's go into the scriptures in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 23 and down and when they came tomorrow they could not drink waters of Mara for they were bitter therefore the name of that place is called Mara and the people complained against Moses saying what shall we drink so he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree somebody say a tree when he cast it into the waters the waters were made sweet and then he made a statue and an ordinance to them and there he tested them then they came to Elim where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees and they camped there near the water I want you to notice where they camped 70 palm trees and 12 springs almost like Cancun <laughs> good place to camp good place to stay not the place where bitter waters are at but the place where there are springs of water and good awesome looking palm trees I'm going to speak today on a message titled bitter waters sweetened or bitter life sweetened bitter water sweetened Israel came out of Egypt they go was going through wilderness and they were going to the promised land it's a symbolic of us going to heaven going through the Christian life which is simplifies to some degree like a wilderness and then we see that the first they encountered the bitter waters the bitter waters and then God showed them how to heal those waters through the tree and these waters were made sweet and after they experienced this healing of waters they came into this place called Elim where no longer the waters were bitter but the waters were in abundance and not only in the abundance but there was also a bunch of palm trees write this down life has three stages the first one is when life gets bitter because of sin because of Satan because of curses the second stage of life is through Christ and salvation he makes our life better and then the third stage that Jesus wants to bring all of us to is to the best life where he wants to bring to a life of more abundance the Lord Jesus Christ said Satan came to steal kill and destroy that's the first stage where most of us arrive in when we are born arrive with sin with sicknesses with diseases with emotional problems with spiritual problems bound to sin bound by Satan but then Jesus says I came to give you life so he makes our life better he takes us from bitterness to betterness and then he says more abundant means not just I want to save you not just I want to bless you but I want to make you a blessing I want to make your life be a blessing to someone else somebody say amen Satan makes our life bitter in the beginning God created the world perfect God created the world without pain without suffering God created the world to be without sickness without war murders without jealousy without hatred without abuse world was perfect Adam lived in it and Satan came to Adam and he threw this thought in Adam's head that God was withholding something good from Adam by asking him not to eat of the forbidden fruit and he was telling him is that God knows a secret that he doesn't want to share with you and God is not to be trusted if you keep on being like this naive stupid sheep he will mislead you and you will miss out on fun in life because God cannot be trusted God should be God you should be sus suspicious of God and Adam started to think perhaps Satan is true 
I believe maybe Satan even came to, God, to Adam and said, Adam, you think you know God? I've been in heaven. You, you were not even there. I known God more than you. You were just born. You were just created. I've been with hot God for a long time. Everything he tells you, that's not all truth. God is hiding something. He hid it from me and he's hiding it from you. Trust me, I know God better than you. He convinced Adam that God is not that good. God cannot be trusted and he poisoned Adam's mind against God and Adam instead of trusting in God now Adam was suspicious of God and he decided to take matters into his own hands and next thing that happens Adam became poisoned against God and we see when he begins to hide from God when he begins to not trust in God Adam through the being poisoned inside against God eventually Satan poisons the paradise Adam was in and destroys that paradise and turns it into the hell we know today Satan's main task is to poison you against God Satan's main task is to poison God against you. Means to paint God in the image that is bad. Means God cannot be trusted. God is not good. His only interest is to punish you. He's only out to get you. He is not wanting to bless you. Satan wants to rewrite the scripture, John 10, 10. And this is what he wants to put in the back of your mind. I came, Satan, to give you life and more abundant. Jesus came to take your life, steal your life and destroy your life. Satan is a liar and his lies today will be disarmed in this place in Jesus name. He wants to poison your mind and make your heart bitter toward God. That somehow God is responsible for the suffering. God is responsible for the hardships, for the challenges or for the things that are happening in your life or maybe God is withholding something from you. Sometimes he will use our circumstances as he did with Job. He will use our unfortunate things in life and he will say, see where is your God now? The one you serve so much, the one you love, the one you're dedicated. Why is he not coming through for you? His goal is to use the bitter waters of life to make you bitter on inside. But he couldn't make Job poisonous inside. Job said, listen, you can poison my family, you can poison my health, you can poison my finances, but you will never at my watch poison my relationship with God. Though he slay me, I will trust him. In good times, in bad times, I will worship him. And God changed his situation for better. God will change your life if you refuse Satan to poison you against God. Satan is a, such a horrible being. Because here he comes and tells you God doesn't love you and you will think he's on your side. The moment he leaves you he runs quickly to God and says he doesn't love you. Satan is not for you. He hates you with passion. He's one of those people that you have in your life and God save you. May God save you from those people who come to you and they talk about another friend and then you quickly find out they went to them and they talked about you. That's exactly who Satan is. He comes to you and tells you how bad God is. And the moment you accept it, quickly runs to God and tells God how bad you are. He's accuser of the brethren. He wants to poison you on inside. And the Bible says the waters were poisoned. And guess what Satan did? He took those waters and poisoned Israelites. Because we read in our Bible, Israelites complained against God. That means no longer the water was poisoned. Their mind was poisoned. Their heart was poisoned. And now they saw God as the one who abandoned them. Dropped them halfway wasn't able to carry them through, wasn't able to, to fulfill all of his promises because that is the plan of Satan to make you bitter toward God, make you poisoned, make your life poisoned and make your heart poisoned. But well we come to church today where we're not going to pretend that Satan doesn't exist and that his plan is not active but we are going to disarm that plan because God has a way to make your poisonous bitter heart or life becomes sweet. Becomes sweet. And that sweetness happens through the cross. As Moses took the piece of wood and he put the wood into the bitter waters and the bitter waters were made sweet. Today we can take the Calvary, we can take Jesus' death on the cross and we can bring it to our heart and in our heart every argument against God Everything that says that God is not for you, he's out to get you, 
and he wants you to be sick he wants you to be poor he wants you to live depressed he wants you to live in depression and stress all of these arguments against God they begin to melt away not when you are perfect but when you are at the feet of the Calvary when you are at the feet of the Calvary the bitterness toward God the bitterness from the devil in your life it begins to turn into sweetness amen in the Bible there are seven names there are many names about God but there are seven names that are God's redemptive names and these redemptive names if you would like to put that on and these redemptive names uh, before you go there God has many names Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, many other names in the Bible Hebrew names means God's a creator, almighty, great I am all awesome names in the Bible about God but there is only seven names that are redemptive these seven names are never used in the scripture except in God's dealing with humanity and these seven names they include the whole need of the humanity so let me just break this down just very very simple is that God in the Bible every time God has a name it speaks of something God doesn't put on labels on himself he doesn't perform you know you can put a label on yourself that you are a technician and if we give you a screwdriver you won't know how to hold it you know you can put a name on yourself that you're a mechanic and you won't know how to open the hood God when he puts a title on himself it's because he's the best the pro in that area God's name reveals God's activity and God's nature and God's power and there are seven names of God that are only redemptive names means these names have been born or these names have been created after the blood of Jesus was poured on the Calvary and after that God said this is who I want to be toward the humans these names are not something God chooses to be to the animal kingdom planet kingdom or into the galaxies or even to angels or demons only to a certain category of people that is humans probably these names were not even existing until we committed sin they were in God but they were not revealed just like a man has a father in him but a father is never revealed until he has a son he walks around as a man but only when he has a child only then a man becomes a father he always had the capacity of being a father but that fatherhood in him was never came out same thing with God there is these seven attributes about God that never came to the surface until man committed sin and God sent his son to die on the cross for them and then God says now this is what I want to be to you you have to know about that why because your faith in God cannot be stronger than your knowledge about who he is your faith in God begins where you will know his will the moment you know more about God is the moment you begin to believe in him and so let me just quickly give you those names you can snapchat not snapchat but take a picture of it <laughs> after service sometimes I see more snapchats I think in our services and I'm like why are you snapchatting when it, the only people who will be checking the snapchat are the people who are snapchatting about the same thing so you can save your snapchats for another time but these these few names Jehovah Tzitkenu which means the Lord is my righteousness Jehovah Shama which means the Lord is near Jehovah Rapha which means the Lord is my healer Jehovah Nisi which means the Lord is my banner or my victory Jehovah Shalom which means the Lord is my peace Jehovah Ra which means the Lord is my shepherd and Jehovah Jireh which means the Lord is my provider it's very interesting the theologians did a very thorough study and they found not eight of those names not six of those names not ten of those names only seven names which mean completion which means God wants to present redemption and the Calvary as not just one-sided where he is your righteousness he wants to present the Calvary also as he is someone who is close to you when no one is near you when everyone abandons you and maybe you're like Joseph they took your colorful coat away from you and people hurt you deeply that you still know that you are not alone 
you may be you may be alone but you are not lonely you are not rejected because the Lord is your shama not because you're Christian but because the blood was spilled on a Calvary he is that because of that God wants to be our healer because Jesus was in pain on the cross he wants to be our healer today he also wants to be Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah God who is our victory. He wants to be not the God who punishes you for sin. He wants to be the God that delivers you from that sin. Tradition and religion teaches us God is only out to punish you. Well I have a news for you today. Through the Calvary God wants to deliver you from the sin you feel like he's out to punish you for. His name is not Jehovah the Punisher. His name is Jehovah the Nisi. His name is not Jehovah do it by yourself. His name is Jehovah Shama. Means I will not leave you alone. I will be with you. You may be like Apostle Paul got chained up and going to Rome to see Caesar. But even there when the ship was breaking down and didn't see the light for 14 days. The angel of the Lord came to Paul and said Paul I am with you and everyone on the board will not die. You are not alone because God is with you. And no, not because you read three chapters every day for the last 30 days. But because the blood was spilled on the Calvary and God chooses to be near you because of the cross. That mindset kills loneliness. That kind of revelation kills rejection. That kind of revelation, if you can put up the screen back. That kind of revelation, it kills the demonic lies that God is against you. But not only he is Jehovah Nisi. Our victory he is also our peace. Jesus wore a crown of thorns on his head and the Bible says the thorns and thistles are cares of life and this crown of thorns pierced his head so deeply that he was mocked as a king. Why did he wear a crown of thorns on his head? Because thorns came as a result of curse and sin. Thorns and thistles the earth produced and it represented man's hardships and man's toil. And that's exactly where hardships and toil go on your head. They torture your mind. Anxiety, fear, what am I going to provide for my family? They're cutting up hours and there is layoffs in my work and these thorns they go deep and deep and you begin to inside suffer. Jesus Christ took that so he can be your peace. So that you will look to your job for your peace, your boss for your peace. But him, Jehovah, Shalom. God your peace. That you can have peace where well, there is nothing to be peaceful about. But there is someone to be peaceful about. Jesus Christ. He doesn't want to be your peace because you deserve it. Not because you're a tither. But because you believe in Him. He is your peace. He has no desire to beat those crown of thorns into your head. He wants to, the Bible says, crown us with loving kindness and mercy. The goodness and mercy will follow all the days of my life. He doesn't want you to be crowned with your worries. He wants to put a new crown and say, listen, I took your crown of thorns upon myself. I want to be your caregiver. You have a God. His name is Jehovah Shalom. Can somebody say amen? God also wants to be Jehovah Ra. He wants to be your shepherd. The difference between a sheep and a wolf is the fact that the wolf is stronger. Sheep is weak and vulnerable, easily lost, sometimes dumb. But the sheep have a shepherd. You may not be strong. You may not be vicious. You don't have to be vicious. You don't have to have the biggest teeth. See some of you think that survive, to survive in your workplace, to survive in this world, you gotta be a wolf. You gotta maneuver your way around. You gotta push people around. I gotta tell you something. Only people who have to do that who don't have a shepherd. But if you got a shepherd, he leads you in the green pastures. If you got a shepherd, he leads you beside still waters. If you got a shepherd, listen, he anoints your head with oil. If you got a shepherd, he prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. And if your enemies don't like you being blessed, and they can stand you being blessed, well, buy them a chair. You have a shepherd. You don't need to be a wolf because you have a shepherd. He will provide for you. He will help you. He will secure you. Can somebody say amen? And the Lord is my provider, Jehovah Jireh. See a lot of people look to the cross. Their life is in sin 
and they see Jesus as their savior. Some people look to the cross and their life is full of stress and they see Jesus as their peace. And then, then we, we look to Jesus as our healer when we have a sickness and we experience God's touch. Some people look to Jesus as their freedom when they experience demonic attacks in their life. But I want to tell you something about the Lord. He doesn't just want to be your freedom and your healer. He also wants you to be provided by Him. To be your provider in the area of your finances, in the area of your career, in the area of your business, in the area of financial dealings. He wants to be Jehovah Jireh. The Lord that provides. The Lord that provides. There is three levels of financial provision in life. One is not enough. It's when you're late on your bills. It's when next phone call you always have on silent because you know who's calling. It's you're constantly, you're constantly receiving those letters and you're, you're not making enough. You're not making enough to make it and you're buying everything on credit card. It's called not enough. It's a very hard life to be in. And then you graduate to level two. It's a level of just enough. Where you look at the month, you look, thank God, this month we made it. But God wants to take you to a place where you have more than enough. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But after he brings me through the valley of the shadow of death, he brings me to the place my cup runs over. He doesn't just want to take you from not enough to enough. But some of you, you're going through the valley of the shadow of death and I have a news for you. If you have a shepherd, he won't bring you to bankruptcy or foreclosure. He will bring you to the place where your cup will run over. Why? It says, God all about money? Oh, of course not. But he is a provider. He is a provider and he wants to provide for you. A lot of times we come to church and we come with a mindset poisoned that God wants me to be poor. God wants me always to struggle. God wants me never to have enough. And most likely we heard this thing from two places, our family and the church. Because some immature preacher got up and said, God wants you to struggle. It's funny, the same preacher sent his kids to the best university in the States. The same preacher drives a nice car, lives in a nice neighborhood, but tells you, you should struggle. Many times we see that example from our family that people always struggled and they made fun of the people who had something more than them and we see that in our mind we come to church and we take Jesus as our savior, Jesus as our healer but when it comes to our finances we somehow on the back of our mind convinced it is not the will of God for us to have more than enough. God is against that because see Jesus said we have to be always poor. And Satan takes scriptures out of the context and poisons your mind. So when it comes to your finances, you will always, not that you will struggle. It's that in your mind, you will struggle to believe. He wants to bless you. You work hard, but you, you don't believe he wants to help you. The Bible says, God gives power to get wealth. The Bible says, he finds pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. If God gets a kick out of his servants prospering, what about his children? Somehow God loves his servants prospering and can't stand when his kids prosper. That is from the devil. That's not from God. Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. The Bible says when righteous prosper, the city rejoices. You know what the devil wants? The devil wants the church to have a poverty mindset. Because he knows, give hundreds of thousands of dollars to this crowd. Guess what's going to happen? There is going to be operations that will be paid for. There will be cars that will be given. There will be houses that will be given. Because these people are nuts. Give them money and they'll destroy this, the devil's kingdom in the community. So what the devil does is he poisons the pulpit, poisons the pew and simply says don't see God as that. This is really bad and just live from enough because he knows he can't advance anything. And then he brings the prosperity mindset to the drug dealers, to the dope dealers, to people who sell prostitutes, to people who promote abortions because he knows if these guys don't have money, drugs won't sell. 
crime won't spread nothing will work if it doesn't have money so he fills them with the mindset I want to have all that I can so I can destroy my generation and the people who can affect their generation the devil poisons them and says that's not for you shut up and sit down God wants our city to be touched because righteous prosper it's not just for you but it's also through you can somebody say amen God wants to bless your life some people saying well yes well that's good that's Old Testament stuff in the New Testament Jesus was always poor well he took five loaves and two fish God who made the universe who said he knows the number of you here didn't he know how many people were there and how much people will eat why on purpose he made so much bread and loaves that not 12 loaves were left 12 baskets were left left means people have ate they burped and they left and still 12 was left why because God wanted to demonstrate to those of you who grew up believing God is God of small and lack and suffering I am God of more than enough Jesus Christ is more than enough he wants to be in your life where you have 12 baskets left or at the end of your month when your budget is over that you don't just have 12 dollars left and then you quickly run to Starbucks and say, finally I can drink some coffee. Or you quickly run and buy those shoes on sale and use 25 coupons. That you quickly, you know, God does not just want us to live. I mean, see, even right now when we have testimonies, people sharing, I don't have medical insurance. Why I don't have medical insurance? Is it because I'm too prosperous? No, it's not because I'm too prosperous. It's because many times there is financial lack, but time is coming. It's okay to be poor in your wallet for now. Make sure you're never poor in your head. Don't be poor in your head. In your head believe one thing. There is a God. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. You look at your boss, love and respect your boss but he is not Jehovah Jireh. Your business is not Jehovah Jireh. Your real estate is not Jehovah Jireh. Listen, your retirement, your grandma is not Jehovah Jireh. Even though you look at her as Jehovah Jireh. God is your Jehovah Jireh. He is the source of your blessings. He will prosper you in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? I believe you're going to have not only a car for yourself, but a car that's paid off. I believe many of you, you'll be able to give cars away. We will live our life today. It may look radical and crazy, but time is coming where you will give houses away. Where you will bless other people. Where you'll be able to share with other people. Because I know some of you, I see some of your faces looking at me like I am a zombie right now. Everything starts with a dream. Not with a reality. I carry the dream in my heart to give vehicles away before I had them. Time came when last year around this time was the first time I gave a vehicle. Then it happened second time and then it happened with the computer, then it happened with the phone, then it happened with the couches, with the table and last week it happened with an iPad because I'm looking like is there anything that I haven't given yet? iPad, yes let's give the iPad away. I live like that today. Why? Because I can afford to. Yes I'm without an iPad but the paper just does just fine. Because in my mind, I don't want to be a slave. In my mind, I don't want to limit my God. Yes, I'm an immigrant in this country, but I'm not an immigrant in my head. I'm a son of Most High God, who Bible says gold and silver is mine. And I know more money in my hands will only grow the church. More money in my hands will promote the kingdom of God. More money in my hands is going to build other people's lives. And that's why the devil is afraid for more money to come into my hands. And he's afraid for me to say this to you because he knows what you are capable of doing. And he will poison your mind. And today I want you to put the cross. And the cross says God wants to be Jehovah Jireh. When he planned the earth, he didn't put poverty here. He put diamonds and gold. Not for the drug dealers. Not for the mafia. Not for the murderers not for people who advocate killing unborn babies he put this not for them not for the devil's kingdom he put it for his children somehow when men sinned God scratched all of that God didn't put a fire and burn all the minerals and riches of the earth no he wants to be your provider do I believe that Jesus bled on a cross so you'll drive a Bentley no you can give a Bentley and I can receive it in Jesus name <laughs> But God wants you to have more than enough to be a blessing to others, blessing to your family, 
that your dreams will become a reality. Can somebody say amen? There is a bitter life through sin. There is better life through the Calvary. But there is the best life through serving. There is a difference between believing in God and serving God. To believe in God, you just come to the cross. But to serve God, you have to come to the Pentecost. You have to come to the place where you see 12 springs. Not just one little spring, but 12 springs and 70 palm trees. God wants to bring us to a place where we camp. Not just in the place where we have just enough, but in a place of abundance where we can be a blessing to our generation. Blessing to those in need. We're not just, you finally make it to the home group. You're like, man, such a great accomplishment of my spiritual life. I finally made it to the home group. That is a great place. That is a better life. But the best life is when you have your own home group. Now maybe in your wildest dreams, you're looking at me today and you're saying, there is no way under this green earth I can have home groups. There is a way. And if there is no way, they'll find life on the other planets. We'll transport you there and you'll start home group there. But you will be a home group leader. You will help other people. Today maybe your biggest miracle is to get a job. Because nobody's hiring. You may be under, underqualified. And honestly, God will give you that blessing. But you know when you get that job, the job of your dreams, did you know that God can take you to a place where you don't just have job, but you provide jobs for others. Think about that. You're like, not me. First, be free in your mind. God is able. The boss that you are serving for, did you know that one day he was in the same place looking for a job and God delivered him from his head in his mind first and then God gave him ideas and now he gives jobs to others. God wants to take you from a better, pl from a better place to the best place where you can be a blessing to others. Today maybe you are a 16 year old, you just got your license and you're praying and wishing that your grandma, your mom and all the relatives will pitch in and buy you that one beaten up car that you always dreamed of having. That is awesome. But I want you to increase your dream already that one day you're gonna give vehicles away. Today maybe you're in a place, you're 21 years old and it is your fantasy to get married. That's what you think about. That's what you pray about it. Maybe every person that you see you're like, is this the one? Is this not, not the one? That is your dream. That is an awesome dream and God is going to give you your most awesome person. You're going to have a beautiful person that you're going to be married to. You're going to have a person that you're going to love and they're going to love you. They're going to trust you. God is going to bless you with that. But the, honestly the best life is not just getting married. It's when you sit in front of two people who are about to get divorced. You counsel them, you pray for them, they get married. Their life changes, their finances change, their future change. That is the best life. That's how God wants us to live. Amen. God will give you ideas. God will give you wisdom. But I want you to dream of a best life. Not just better life. Uh, there was a guy in Kenya who um, working at the oil company and he wanted to build an orphanage for children. So he gave God a promise that God if you help me with finances I will build an orphanage and um, he wasn't getting any promotions so he noticed in his oil company that there was a pipe that was running there and the pipe had a crack and it leaked oil. He came to his main supervisor and said we have to shut down the factory because pipe is leaking oil. And we have to fix it. The, the supervisor said, well if we shut down the factory it's going to take us weeks or maybe a month to fix this crack and then we're going to lose billions of dollars. We cannot afford to shut down the factory. He said, is it okay if I put a bucket under that crack? The supervisor says, knock yourself out. Go do it. So he went, he put the bucket under that crack and in that year he made $150,000 out of that gas. Out of that, out of that, um, out of that oil, and in this way, he went. First of all, paid off his debts right away. His life improved, and then he built an orphanage for children. And then now he's looking for other cracks <laughs> in other pipes, probably. But God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God is for you. He's not against you. You may say that's too good to be true. It would be, if the man who said that wouldn't pay with his life for it. Jesus says, I came to give you life.
the word life in John chapter 10 verse 10 means Zoe it's actually where my mom's name is Zoya I met a young lady last Sunday whose name is Zoe word Zoe means the very life of God what Jesus is saying I didn't come to give you life because I had 20 of them in heaven I chose just many many money I just chose this one I give you no he says the very life I have I gave therefore I am so bold about receiving that life he already gave it he already died why live with something lesser than Jesus Christ gave Satan lies to us and he says Jesus came to steal kill and destroy I came to give life the devil is a liar he gives nothing only takes Satan is a thief he makes our life bitter Christ wants to make your life sweet in your finances in your relationship and then he wants to take you to the place of 12 springs 70 palms where you become a blessing to others where you begin to sponsor others where you begin to lift others where you begin to heal other people's lives where you begin to deliver other people through the power of the Holy Spirit I saw this testimony this morning of a lady who had a sick it was in South Africa a lady who had a sick son and her sick son she brought to church and that uh, the church services were long as pretty typical in Africa and so this baby boy in her arms in the arms of her husband he died they were sitting in the overflow room and the little baby boy actually started to um, give uh, give out uh, um, what do you call it? foam foam actually came out of his mouth and he passed he completely he was out the doctors were there the ambulance were there and so they checked him immediately and so the the father and the mother quickly decided to run to the church to the front so that the main pastor can pray but the ushers didn't let them go because they were in the other overflow room and they're upset and mad that they brought a sick child and nobody prayed for the child on the opposite in the church he died before they admitted to put that baby in the ambulance one of the ushers took out the anointing oil like the scripture says to pray for the sick and he decided before they take that baby into the hospital he wanted to pray just that the soul of that baby will rest in peace that's that he called a few other people said well let's just pray that the soul of that baby will rest in peace they took the anointing oil the moment they anointed the baby's forehead the baby starts coughing the baby opened its eyes looked around and it was a 10 minutes about 10 minutes of being dead the baby came back to life not only it came back back to life but it started to speak normally because sometimes after 10 minutes when your brain shut down you can actually become damaged you cannot speak no more or people become paralyzed the baby was completely normal was moving then they ran to the front and now the ushers let them go to the front and as they started to share the testimony the whole church erupted the church starts celebrating people start out of the excitement bringing money and that family left the church service with ten thousand dollars here you come with the sick baby you got a resurrection and 10 G's in South Africa went home imagine that kind of a service imagine that kind of a God who can turn your bitter situation into a better situation your better situation into a best situation can somebody say amen listen God has a better life for you but God also has a best life for you if you trust in him and if you believe in him can somebody say amen